What's up, nerds? How are you doing? Me and Joe back again, and it's time. Let's talk about Marvel and DC. Let's go. Before we get into it, we need to announce our winner from our last Let's Talk About It video. Uh, and the winner, you will pop up here. Your name should be there. Please make sure uh, to come and DM us on Twitter or uh, TikTok or message us on YouTube if you have any issues. We need to send that out to you. So congratulations for that. Um, we are also giving away uh, another pop. Uh, so th we're going to be doing this <clears throat> quite a bit. We're going to give away... Uh, an Iron Man uh, snap, glow in the dark from Infinity Endgame. It's going to be coming up here. Um, to enter that for this amazing pop that I desperately want, um, so I might enter it. I won't. That's probably illegal. Um, <laughs> make sure to like, comment. Comment is the most important bit because that's how we find out who the winner is. So please make sure you are commenting, uh, like the video as well if you enjoy it, and we would appreciate it if you did subscribe. Uh, we do enjoy these videos. We want you to be a part of it. So please make sure to do that if you want to join the journey and also the competition. So today, we wanted to talk about Marvel and DC, and not specifically about the actual companies themselves, but in terms of their TV and movie universes and the, the contrast between their own universes, so the TV mm. universe, the movie universe, and also the contrast between each other. And this is something I've talked to you about for a while, Chris. It's something I've yeah. wanted to talk about for a while. And I feel like it is important because you look at DC and for me, I've always enjoyed the Marvel movies more. However, I was watching DC TV shows a bit before the, like the Marvel TV shows came out, the Netflix ones and mm. so on. Um, so I was kind of introduced to Marvel movies first, DC TV shows first. And something I find really interesting is the DC TV shows and the Marvel films have the same kind of like energy in terms of the light-heartedness of it, how how light it is. The DC TV shows, I'll just pull one out of the air for example, you look at The Flash mm -hmm. um, and it's very, it's the kind of TV show that if it wasn't a superhero TV show I just wouldn't like because yeah. it's very much that kind of, I don't know, that kind of keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> oh, I did something wrong at the end of the day. I've learnt my lesson now. I'm really sorry about that. We'll it's move cheesy, on. isn't it? It's cheesy. It, it, it's cheesy. It, it's really cheesy. Um, and I suppose you could say that Arrow's the exception, but even Arrow, after season one, got a lot lighter. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd agree with that. I think Arrow would be the only one that I would bring up as darker of, of all the... Um, DC TV series. There is, we need to work this out, right? Because it keep, I keep forgetting it. It's like the CBW or the CW uh, universe. Um, and uh, yeah, Arrow's the darker one, but Flash, uh, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow. Especially um, Legends of Tomorrow. It's all like cheesy pie, which is like fine. It's fine. Um, but you're right. You look at the, 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 DC Universe, the Marvel version, uh, the movie version, sorry, <laughs> fraudulent slip, the movie version <laughs> of um, DC's projects, and they're dark. Like, Batman vs. Superman is dark. Uh, Justice League, Snyder Cut, is dark. Um, <laughs> you have, the contrast is huge. Like, Barry Allen uh, in the TV series, there's no way that he was going to be able to be the Flash in the movie universe, mm. because he's just too happy he's too light-hearted uh he's too rainbow and sunshines which is great look i love the flash i'm not bashing the flash here <laughs> that rhymed um but I, I am i am saying that it's really weird how the movies are super dark the tv shows are really really light but they flip if you go to the marvel stuff yeah and it's it, it is crazy because uh, the Netflix Marvel shows came a fair whack after we, we saw the um, the MCU kind mm. of be created. And are they linked? Who knows? But um, you, you go into it, and in every single MCU film, I, I, I'm almost certain, without exception, there is moments up where you would just crack up because it, it, it's almost like. So it, some of that's very dry humour, but it's very light-hearted, um, especially with Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. 
um, him particularly. He kind of brings that light-hearted element, which kind of set, sets the tone for the rest of the MCU. Mm. And then, then you have Punisher. <laughs> then you have Daredevil. And it's dark. It's it really so dark, dark stuff. Yeah. Gory as well. And I love it. And I think that's what I wanted to talk about. Where, where is the bar in terms of where do these movies fit? Where, what is the ideal kind of balance between light and dark in a superhero movie or TV show? Mm. Because I personally, I, I love Daredevil, I love Punisher. That's my kind of series, that's my kind of level. But equally so, you look at the Marvel movies and I love that too. Like I, I love that light-heartedness. Mm. Yeah, whereas I look at the DC stuff and I don't really enjoy most of the DC stuff, uh, movies-wise, the TV shows I, really, I do enjoy. Like I do enjoy Flash, Arrow, uh, Wonder Girl, not as much Legends of Tomorrow. Um, but it, it, it is good. I, I'm interested in whether it's like a, a tactical play from these studios to have something light-hearted and then something heavy, right? So you have like a Punisher and Daredevil, uh, you got also uh, Iron Fist, um, you got the Defenders, Jessica Jones, all those stuff are really heavy. Um, and, and then in contrast, you can put on Guardians of the Galaxy um, and have a light hearted um, Marvel hit. Like, even though they're not in the same universe, whatever, um, you can still enjoy Marvel content, whether you want to binge it on Netflix and have that intense hit. Or you just want to watch a light-hearted stuff with kids or younger people. Um, I think that's maybe part of part of it. But it's interesting how DC have also done the same thing. Like their movies are dark, their TV shows are light. Yeah. Um, and you could arguably say that uh, DC's TV shows are are more successful. I mean, not even arguably, they are more successful than um, the Marvel ones. Um, I don't know what season Flash is on, like eight or something. Um, yeah, so silly. Yeah, Arrow was on like six, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, Daredevil got three. No, Punisher got. Yeah, Daredevil got, Daredevil Daredevil got, got three. Two. Oh, two is it? I, I think it was two know. for Daredevil. Two, two, for two for Punisher? Two for Punisher, was yeah. It? No, I'm sorry. I think it's three Daredevil, two Punisher, two. Um, Jessica Jones, One Iron Fist, um, and then you had um, Luke Cage. The group one. Sorry. Luke Cage, and then yeah. the group one, wasn't it? The group one. Oh, the group, not dancing Groot. Sorry, I thought you said the group one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Defenders. <laughs> Defenders only had one season uh, so, yeah. series as well. So great series, by the way. But um, yeah, and it's interesting as well because uh, you leave Defenders alone. Um, you look at um, look at Flash. I don't know whether whether it's the style of the show that makes me not want to watch it anymore. It's not I don't want to watch it anymore, but I don't have I don't want to set time aside to watch it anymore. Mm. Um, in terms of where I'm at with Flash, I've just I've watched Crisis and then I kind of just fell off after that because Crisis oh, was the yeah. big storyline. Had to watch that. But after that, I just I didn't have the urge to go back and watch it, where I think if Marvel Netflix put out another season of um, Punisher, Daredevil, obviously it's not going to be Netflix anymore, but if Disney um, carry on that kind of, that um, time frame, that story out, I would go and make time out of my day to watch that. Yeah. I yeah, I'd agree. I, I would agree. I think um, I I fell off. So I, I found it too hard. The DC stuff, even though I think they're better, um, except Punisher because I love Punisher. Uh, I found it so hard trying to watch them in chronological order. So I had like this yeah, big yeah. list of like, okay, I need to watch two seasons of Arrow, then the first season of Flash, then the season of one uh, Supergirl, and then it like take it episode by episode, trying to like fit them all in as a jigsaw puzzle. Where I, I don't want to do that. I want to just go, okay, yeah. bang on Punisher and just watch all of Punisher, uh, or bang on Daredevil. You know, I don't need I don't need to watch Daredevil and Punisher to understand the story. 
um, I get spoilers for one or the other, but I, d- I don't need to do it. Whereas um, you get huge spoilers if you watch Flash before you watch the two seasons of Arrow. Like, there's no point really watching Arrow um, because it spoils like a finale if you watch Flash. Yeah. And I felt like actually, it, a contract, you know what I mean? Like a phone contract. Yeah. Like, you've got you to watch it. And it's down to the episode as well because the crossovers, though not really kind of relevant to their separate, for the most part, their separate stories. They they show characters who are there, characters who are not. And if you watch that kind of crossover episode, so say if you were watching all of Flash or mm. all of Arrow first, you you have these massive, massive spoilers. Whereas with, you look at Daredevil, you look at um, Punisher, yes, there is those kind of moments of crossover, but it, it, it's just not as season destroying as yeah. the DC spoilers would be. Yeah, um, and, like Flash Flash actually tells you a main character's death in, in Arrow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wow, like, great. Then don't get me wrong, I still think that they're better series, but I just felt the way they did them trapped you in and I lost interest. I was like, nah, I'm not I'm not doing it. Um, and then you look at One Division, Falcon the Winter Soldier, um, the new Marvel stuff, Seems yeah. a little bit, uh, a, li- a lot lighter actually, and just basically films spread out. And so I wonder whether that's like the new thing they're going to go to. Um, and I'm, in- I just, I- I'm interested to see what DC going to do with their TV series because Flash has just been cancelled. Um, yeah. Arrow's obviously already cancelled. I don't see the rest of them lasting too much longer. Not without the main ones. I, I think they worked as long as there was a, a TV universe to be there to be worked with but I'm also hoping that the new Marvel light hearted TV shows isn't a bad omen for whether we'll see Punisher back whether we'll see mm. Daredevil back I, re- I really hope it's not because I, I think the, the casting was unreal the the you just can't disrespect that those shows they are they're masterpieces the fight scenes the choreography yeah so but, good but whatever it is you prefer that kind of light-hearted show. I prefer that kind of darker show. What do you guys prefer? Let us know in the comments. And if you let us know in the comments, you're also in, into a giveaway. So why win, not? Win. Come talk to us. We'd love to have a chat with you in the comments. Uh, which do you prefer, lighter or darker? But I think that just about does it for Let's Talk About this week. We hope you enjoyed. Let us know if there's anything you do want us to talk about down below that doesn't get talked about, and we'll do that. But until next time, I've been Joe, that's Chris, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.